today I've decided to discuss marriage and divorce. So I got married when I was 23 years old and my ex-spouse was 24 years old. And I'm currently 28 years old right now. And my marriage, it didn't, it didn't work. <laughs> I'm divorced. Um, and it, it was, just, it was a really short lived marriage. Um, and I don't want to say that we were too young because I've seen people get married younger than I had and they're still together to this day going strong. As far as I know, everything's good and you know, they, they, they still rocking with each other. So I don't really want to say our age played a factor. I I really believe the intentions and the, the reason, not necessarily the intention, but the reason behind why we got married, it just wasn't a, it wasn't a strong, it wasn't a genuine foundation um, for a healthy marriage, for a long lasting marriage. Um, it was in my 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 ex spouse had recently told me this like he felt like it was done as a favor um and looking back it it kind of was that sucks to say but it kind of was um i don't really think at least on my end i can't speak for him and how he feels but at least on my end i don't really think it was necessarily that i wanted to get married it was just like given the situation and the circumstances that were happening at that time I felt like it would be beneficial for us to get married more so for him than me um just given what was going on you know at the time and we literally like we just it was so random we just woke up one day and we was getting ready to go get breakfast at McDonald's. And we were just like, let's go down to the courthouse today. Let's go, let's go get married today. Let's go get a marriage license. Like, <laughs> it was just random. And we ended up going down to our local courthouse. We got a marriage license and everything in literally four, not even barely four weeks later. Like literally three and a half weeks later. It wasn't even four weeks. Three and a half weeks later, we had a full-blown wedding. I'm, I'm like it wasn't no shotgun wedding. It was full blown. Like we had a, I had a venue, caterer, photographer, a wedding party, like a reception, all of that. Um, in not even 30 days. And a lot of people, when they initially were getting like my wedding invitations and stuff, a lot of people were shocked. They thought it was a prank, to be honest. They thought it was like planned because I had always been that person that said I would never get married. I was like, I don't care about marriage. I don't want to get married. Um, I'm most likely not going to get married if I decide I want to have kids and I'm going to go to a sperm bank. I had it all planned. I was like, nah, marriage ain't for me. That ain't it. But here I am. I'm <laughs> People getting wedding invitations for me and they like, well, I didn't even know you was dating somebody like huh what where is this coming from like what's going on what's what's the real reason why y'all get married like a lot of people were already skeptical of why we were getting married to begin with a lot of people thought I was pregnant which I wasn't I didn't I didn't get even get pregnant until like months like a, like not I don't want to say it was the following year but it was like months later um people thought I were pregnant they like they just everybody was so thrown off they really thought I, I was like I was joking like especially my mother that I was playing and, you know, me and him were like, no, we're, you know, we're dead ass. Like, <laughs> we're married. Like, we're getting married. And we ended up, we got married. And we ended up staying with um, my family for a little bit while I, um, you know, figured out, like, was trying to figure out, like, where we was going to move to and everything. And eventually, like, a few months later, we ended up moving into an apartment together Mind you, I'm not going to say we lived together before, but we kind of did. Um, we each always used to have our own separate apartments, but he would always, if he needed to come crash in my house for a while until he figured things out, he always came over. Like, I always welcomed him into my home, and the same went for me. Um, now, I, I, was, I didn't necessarily move into his apartment, 
um, when it came to be my time to um, be in his living space. But I would be lying if I said I went over there a lot. You would think I lived there, but I didn't. I would typically stay there with him for a couple of days and then I would go back home and just stay there for a day or two and then I would come back over to his house but I never like lived I never had a key or anything to his place he did try to give me a key and I didn't want one I just felt like I don't live here I don't pay no bills here I don't need no key to your house so yeah (laughs) and our situation was even crazier because we we didn't really date like we got married in 2015 and we had been, I say, the only way to describe it to me is we had been in, involved with each other since 2012. And when I say involved, like, he always let me know, like, up front, I want to be in a relationship with you. Like, I want to be with you. Um, You know, let's make it official. And I just, I was enjoying being single. I didn't want to be <laughs> in a committed relationship or tied down to nobody. I honestly went into that situation with him thinking this was all fun and games. Like, this somebody I'm probably just going to hang out with a couple of times, kick it with, talk to, maybe text her and there, maybe talk on the phone, which we we never really talked on the phone um, because I'm a texter. But I I honestly felt like the situation with him would eventually fade out. I really did not see anything long term with him. And I just felt like if it if it did turn out to be that way, I wanted it to happen naturally. I didn't want it to be forced. I didn't want it to be rushed. And I felt like he was rushing me because he he would like I think after like the third month of us consecutively talking almost daily, he was like, OK, girl, what type of time you on? Like what you want to do? I, I want to be with you at this point. Let's be together. And I I just don't move that fast. I. And I know some people think three months, girl, if you don't know if you want to be with this person in three months, stop wasting motherfuckers time, like leave him alone. But the thing was, I would always tell him and I would always use this specific term of let's just go with the flow. I felt like let's let things happen naturally. You know, let's do that. And he's just kind of like, uh, no, I'm telling you straight up, I want to be with you. So what's up? And I would always just I don't want to say I rejected him. I mean, technically I did, but I would always just let him know, like, I don't, I don't want to be, you know, I'm not, I, not necessarily, I don't want to be with you per se. I just want to be with anybody. I don't want to commit to anybody right now. Um, But he was very persistent and I never once led him on or strung him along or had him thinking like, I don't think I ever even told him that I wanted to be with him. I would just always say, I'm not ready. Like, I don't want to be in a relationship right now. Blah, blah, blah. I never told him, like, I wanted to be with him. But, I mean, he he was very vocal with me about his intentions with me and what he wanted. And I would just always just kind of, like, <laughs> turn it down. Like, I ain't on it. Like, mm, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm just not on that. So, I, I was honest in that sense where I did let him know that. I didn't just leave him hanging. I didn't have him. I wasn't playing mind games with him. I didn't have him thinking I wanted to be with him or and I wanted him to just wait for me to mentally get to the point where I wanted to be with him. I I never expected that of him. I expected him to to talk to other women, to hang out with other women, to, you know, do whatever he was doing with other women. I never once felt like he was just mine and he, he can't do anything until I'm ready to do something. And he doesn't need to be giving his time and attention to other females. I was I'm I'm not that type of person. So we and during that from 2012 until the day we went to the courthouse and got that marriage license, we were never, ever officially in a relationship ever. It was almost like it was a situation turned to a marriage. It was just weird. Um, It was just awkward. Like, I can't even explain this to people because we we didn't date. We, We definitely clearly we hung out a lot. We, you know, vented to each other. You know, he had no problem venting to me, me the same. I probably wasn't as open as he he was sometimes, but we still vented to each other. We were comfortable with each other. We had a lot of fun together. I, I will never act like I was miserable or anything with him because during that time we did have a lot of fun together. And he always let me know what he wanted when it came to me. And I just was never on the same page. And I tend, I just tend to have that problem in my relationships 
I don't I don't know why I'm I'm never on the same page as the person that I'm talking to but you know we it's a lot of stuff that happened in between but he always remained firm that he wanted to be with me and eventually we gonna be together <laughs> so he never went away like even when he did even when you know I, he did let me know like he was you know talking to other females or you know he was getting serious with other females I really didn't care because I'm just like, well, I don't want to be with you. So, you know, you, you're not obligated to me. Like, do your thing. Like, I don't care. And that offended him. Like, that really pissed him off because he's like, he's like, you know, we spending all this time together and we, we clearly have a connection. We clearly have some type of bond here. You know, we enjoy being around each other. What's stopping you from, from being with me? Like, what? And I never could really have an answer. I could just, I just did not want to be in a relationship at that point. So we went through the things that we went through between 2012 and 2015 when we decided to just randomly go get married. Of course, in the beginning of the marriage, we, we had already been through the honeymoon stage at that point, clearly. But when you married, it's different because now you're using different terminology. Now it's like, this is my husband, this is my wife. But it was weird to go from basically just being, I, I, I don't want to say fuck buddies, but basically that's kind of what we were, um, to being husband and wife and never, ever being boyfriend, girlfriend, never being like, just this, my man, this, my woman, it just turned from this, my, I, he want, I wouldn't even call it as people say now, sneaky link. I wouldn't call him that, um, Cause we weren't sneaking around. I mean, it was, it was, there was nothing secretive about it or, you know, anything like that, but to just go from having no title, no real relationship to now you marry it, it. It definitely was a transition and I won't sit here and lie. Like we, we had to do the person that ended up officiating our wedding. We had to do a few premarital counseling sessions and I was sitting in them sessions and I was just listening to some of his responses and the responses did not shock me or surprise me because a lot of the, the dialogue, the conversations that we had in those counseling sessions, me and him had already had privately on our own, you know, just throughout the time we've been knowing each other. But when I started thinking about it in a bigger picture and I'm listening to his responses, I'm just like, I literally said to myself in one of those sessions, like, I don't see myself being with him in the next five years. And at that moment, I should have just called everything off. But it, it was, I won't say it was embarrassment, but it was just like people didn't invest their time, their money. People didn't call off work, move stuff around to try to be there for me on my, what was supposed to be my big day, my special day. I, I didn't want to do that. But in the back of my mind, I'm just like, this shit ain't finna work, like it's not gonna work <laughs> I was just listening to the things he was he was saying and it was almost like he expected so much out of me but he didn't have those same expectations for himself when it came to the marriage <laughs> and the relationship and I was just like oh, oh my god like what am I doing but I went ahead and went through we got married it, you know the wedding was really nice it was nice um it was a cool day, like, I don't know, it was cool, and then when we moved into our, like, I don't know, it just, it was weird, like, I, that's the only way I can describe it, it was very, very weird, and I, I don't even know, like, and to this day, like, when I think about that, I don't even like calling it a marriage, I mean, that's what it is, so I have to call it by its technical term, but that was, I don't know, I don't know what the hell that was, but fast back, you know, fast forward back to when we moved into our own apartment and I just felt like the, the honeymoon stage, the new, the revised honeymoon stage of being husband and wife, it was slowly starting to wear off and I just started noticing, I just started noticing things he was doing that he used to do you know when we when we were just involved with each other and it it just started to bother me so 
one day I like just sat him down and was like, hey, I'm noticing you doing whoop de whoop de woo. I want you to stop doing it because it's bothering me. It concerns me. I feel like it's inappropriate. I feel like it's disrespectful. I never would just sit him down and say, hey, stop doing this because I said so. Don't question me. Like, get the fuck out of my face. Just stop doing it. I was never like that. I would I sat him down and explain to him what was bothering me, why it was bothering me, and why I didn't want it to continue. And he, he would just brush it off. He would just dismiss it. You know, he felt like, you know, I didn't have anything to worry about. Like, I'm with you, blah, 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 blah. And I told him, I think I had told him it was it was continuing to happen as time went on. And eventually um, I found some things out and I approached him about it. And I explained to him like, yo, if I find out this is still happening, I'm just going to pack up all my shit. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm just going to pack up all my shit and I'm going to get the hell up out of here. Because what I'm not going to do is stay in a situation where I'm starting to become miserable, where I'm starting to be sad or I'm starting to feel like I'm not wanted or appreciated or I'm, I'm just like a being a pest or a nuisance to you. And I'm not doing any, you know, what I'm, saying? I'm not doing anything. So I told him that. And he didn't even take it serious. I really don't think he took what I said serious. Um, Cause it was a lot of other stuff that happened, but like long story short, that's pretty much what I said. So I'm thinking, okay, we good. So then Mother's Day, 2016. At this point, I think we had only been married, but like six months, six borderline seven months. But Mother's Day, 2016, I found out that he was still doing what he was doing. And he happened to be, I didn't plan, I didn't strategically wait for him to leave, but it just so happened that morning he decided to spend the day with his mom for Mother's Day. And while he was gone, I peeped that he was still doing what he was doing. And I ended up calling some family over and I literally, at the time I had like a large SUV and I literally stuffed the hell out of that car. I stuffed everything that I bought. Everything that I brought into that motherfucking apartment, I stuffed it in that car and I left. And I ended up going to and um like staying at a at a at another apartment um that a family member of mine had that they weren't living in at the time. So I did that for a while and I really thought about it because the like the like divorce was in the back of my mind because. I already was iffy about even being in the marriage. So for that to happen, it just kind of almost like solidified and, and validated my thoughts. And just that initial feeling that I had about it. And I was like, okay, let me wait till I calm down. I don't want this decision to be irrational. I don't want to do it on impulse. I don't want to do it based off my current emotional state, which is just anger and just rage. So I was like, let me calm down. Let me make sure I, I don't, you know, let me make sure that this is what I really want and that I don't, I'm not second guessing it. And I feel like me and him can't work it out or whatever. And I waited, I left Mother's Day 2016. And I didn't go foul for divorce until... June like June 17th or something um I gave myself time me and him had talked a couple of times in between that time literally the day I decided I was going to go file for divorce I reached out to him and I was just like you know I'm getting ready to go um file the papers are you are you do you let me know like do you not want to work on things and I ain't gonna lie I, I did that kind of as a courtesy because I already knew in the back of my mind I, I was going to file for divorce but I was still open to the possibility I was still open to stalling if he showed an interest in wanting to try to reconcile and work things out and he pretty much was just like you're gonna do what you want to do so whatever and that was the last thing he said to me so I went and filed for divorce um 
And unfortunately, I went and filed for divorce. I had moved out of the apartment. I had actually just signed a new lease and was getting ready to move to a new place. So, and I'm thinking, oh, like I'm about to get a divorce. You know, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm 24 years old. I had just turned 24. I'm like, I'm about to get a divorce. I'm 24 years old. I had just got a new job um, working for the state, the state that I live in, um, working it in the court system, salaried. I was making nice money. I'm like, oh, it's up from her. You know, I'm only going up. Like, it's lit. Only to find out I was pregnant like two weeks later. And I'm just like, what the hell? Like, the hell? I'm thinking I'm going to make my grand exit from this man's life. And this happens. Like, really? All these years I've been with this man and I've never gotten pregnant the 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 one time I'm legit about to be completely done with him, I get pregnant. Really? What? So of course I was I was I was highly disappointed in myself. One, because I'm just like, what the hell? And I I contemplated, you know, terminating the pregnancy because I'm just like, oh my God, like no. But that's just not something I personally believe in so I was like oh shit like I'm, I'm just going to figure it out um but one thing that remained firm was I was getting divorced I didn't care that I was pregnant I wasn't one of those people that feel like I'm going to try to make it work for the kids I mean I, that's just not me I feel like I'm not going to sacrifice my you know my mental state my my happiness and because like I said happy wife happy life you know if if me as the mother if I'm not happy my I'm really I can't even my kids can't be happy if I'm not happy and I just I wasn't on nothing like that I wasn't gonna stay because of because of a baby you know I was okay with co-parenting um of course I did let him know you know we of course we decided we was gonna proceed with the pregnancy um, but I did let him know, like, I'm still getting a divorce because at that point I had an actual court date for the divorce. Um, and it was really quick. It would have been a really quick divorce had I not got pregnant. <laughs> and I went to the court date and they told me because I was pregnant, you can't get the divorce. You have to wait till this baby is born. That fucking sucks because I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to take even longer, which it did. It took like another it took like another year. But after filing for divorce, moving out and all of that. It was just like, why did I just waste my time? And then I really started to self-reflect. I'm never am going to sit and make it seem like I did absolutely nothing wrong. I know how to take accountability. I know what my faults were. And I think a lot of the problems that we had in our marriage was communication. That was like the biggest thing. Because I feel like both of us were eat we were both not having certain needs or certain wants, you know, met by each other. And instead of us just being adults and sitting down and discussing that and expressing ourselves and trying to come up with a solution, we just kind of held it in and we felt like each other should have been able to read each other's minds. And then all that did was create a lot of tension and animosity in the household. And it, it just, it strained things even more. But I can definitely say I am I'm not an affectionate person and I think that was one of the biggest that was one of the biggest things like I'm just I'm not an affectionate person I'm not that clingy lovey-dovey mushy type woman I don't like to be all over the person that I'm dating I don't have to do the hugging and kissing and holding hands when we out I honestly don't like PDA anyway like I don't know I, I just I've never been a fan of it I don't know but I knew I was not affectionate enough for him he was like a big baby he loved being baby like he was a baby like he just acted like a, a big kid like a big baby and I was just even when I tried to be affectionate towards him to me it wasn't genuine because I, I just felt out of place doing it because it was not something I was used to doing um and I'm like, bitch, how like how you gonna get married and you not affectionate? Like, what? <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing? So that was like one of the big things. And then two, I don't feel like I was emotionally available for him. 
once again, I'm not the type of person to like really, well, back then, I'm working on that now, so I'm better with that now, but I wasn't the type of person that really like discussing my feelings. If something was bothering me or upset me, I really just like to keep it to myself and just deal with it or just, you know, just just brush it off and just be like, whatever, like, I'm not even going to talk about it. Simply because I feel like, I felt like in that particular relationship when, like, and I'm pretty sure it's probably on both ends, but I have to speak for me. When I would voice my issues or, like, any problems that I had, I just felt like he downplayed them. He would just downplay them and dismiss them and act like I was just basically doing the most and I was just being extra. When it was, like, it was valid things that I was being concerned about. And... To me, I was already just kind of iffy when it came to just like showing emotions, but that made me just kind of back off of even like being any type of emotional with him because I'm just like, well, this motherfucker don't care. Like, what's the point of me saying trying to talk to him when he just going to he just not going to listen to nothing that I'm saying. He going to tune me out. And I, I knew being involved with him at that point, it was like like four or five years or something like that. I knew when he wasn't listening to me and he was just letting me talk and when he was just waiting for me to shut up. So I'm like, well, I'm not going to sit here and be pouring my damn heart out. And he just waiting for me to shut the fuck up. Like, just to be quite frankly honest, I was like, I'm not going to do that. So furthermore, that made me basically just put up like this kind of guard with him. Like, I'm not. I'm not even just going to address anything that's bothering me unless it's like serious, serious. And that was, that's where I went wrong. I should have addressed the smallest little thing because they would eventually turn into big things. So I know that was one thing. I was not affectionate enough, if I was even at all. And I was not emotionally available for him. You know, he was just the type of person, he liked expressing himself. He liked talking about his feelings sometimes, you know, when he, when he wants to talk about them. I wasn't like that. He, I felt like he probably felt like he had to just force stuff out of me. You know, he had to just constantly keep like digging and digging and digging and prying and prying and prying. And he's like, why the hell am I working this hard to talk to you? And you, we supposed to be married. Like you're supposed to be my wife. I shouldn't have to do all of that. If something's wrong with you, like, let me know. Um, and I just, (laughs) I didn't. And then another one I think was really big was appearance. I'm, really a plain Jane like I'm I don't really have a style I'm just kind of like a sweatpants t-shirt type of girl a leggings or baggy t-shirt type of girl I'm I I was never that girl that would put on a a face full of makeup and dress down to the t just to go to the grocery store I felt like when I'm out running errands and stuff I want to be comfortable I don't want to be wearing heels. I don't want to be wearing a, a full-blown outfit to go pick up groceries, to go pick up medicine. To, I, I just, I wasn't that type of person. Like, of course, if I was in certain settings, I, you know, I would dress myself up and everything like that. I wasn't just running around with, like, crust, crust in my eyes and shit. But um, I was, like, my style was, like, pretty home, like, I don't want to say homebody-ish, but it was just plain Jane. That's the only way to describe it. It was, like, you look decent, but I can see the potential that you have to look better. Um, but yeah, and he was he was like a pretty boy. He was all about his appearance. He takes and to this day, he takes pride in his appearance. And that's nothing wrong with that. That's that's awesome. You should, you know, want to look your best at all times, like no matter what, no matter what you're doing, where you're going. He was like he he coordinated his outfits down to his his accessories, which was like his watches and his hats. And he, he was always like that from, from the moment I met him, like I could, like he was about his appearance and quite naturally, if you look good, you're going to want the person that you with, the person that you got on your arm, you're going to want them to look good. But unfortunately, I'm just a person where a, my style is my style. Your style is your style. Like if we go out to eat or we go to the movies or something, yeah, I'm gonna dress up. I'm gonna dress up. I'm gonna look nice. If we going to the damn bank, nigga, I'm not doing all of that. I'm going to brush my hair, make sure my hair looks decent, pull it back in a ponytail, put a hat on, whatever. And I'm going to throw on some sweats and I'm going to throw on a t-shirt, go to the bank and come back home. I, I could not fulfill that for him. And I think he wanted me to take more pride in my appearance. 
and I'm not gonna say I was like I don't want to make it seem like I was just looking busted as hell but I was just looking like I don't know like I'm finna run and take the trash out type of thing where I just throw on a shirt it matched but I just really didn't put that much I think he wanted me to put more effort into my appearance especially when we were out in public and for him he didn't give a fuck if we was at I don't care if we at the mall I don't care with the grocery store I don't care if we at the bank I don't care where we at. I don't care if we just running at Home Depot and get something. I want my woman to look good. I want her to match my fly. I want her to have some type of swag about her. And unfortunately, that that wasn't me. Like, I, I just, that's not my thing. Like, that's not my style. I dress how I dress. Um, and I think that was another, that was, a, I think that was, I don't know. I can't say if that was the biggest thing, but I think, <laughs> I definitely think that was like in the top. But once again, a lot of it came from, I feel like if, if what he wanted me to kind of tweak or change was concerning like my ways, like how I behave, how I act, I would have been more than willing to do that. But when it's something like my style, like you just don't like my sense of style, you don't like the way I dress in the sense that you feel like it's not. I'm, I don't even know the right words to say, but like, you just, you, it almost like he felt like I just threw anything on. Like, I really just didn't, I didn't put, like, once again, I didn't put any effort into my appearance. You just throw on a t-shirt, throw on some shorts, and you out the door. But, I mean, that that was me, you know, that was just something that was my style that's what I was comfortable with like I said if we depending on the setting that we in I'm gonna dress accordingly but just an everyday thing that wasn't me and that's okay because I used to look at him crazy like dude boy you finna go to the gas station what the hell you got all in on like what are you doing but that's just what it was I know that I definitely had some faults in that marriage I know I contributed to the demise of that marriage. I will, I will never see him try to try to put all the blame on him and act like he didn't do, you know, like <laughs> I didn't do anything. I was just, I'm the victim here. No, we, we both equally contributed things to that marriage that deaded it, unfortunately. And it is what it is. But when we got, when we got the divorce, I'm just like, it took a little over a year to finalize everything. Luckily, it was, I mean, I ain't going to say it was mutual because he made it clear he really didn't want the divorce. He he wanted to try to work on things, but he already knew, like, once my mind is made up, it's made up. And, and that's right. He was right. Once my mind is made up, it's made up. So he didn't even, he didn't curve to fight for it because he felt like, for what? She going to leave anyway. She want to leave. She want to leave. But one thing I never did. I, I I never entertained the thought of like getting back with him. The uh, once I already like I said, once I made the decision to file those papers, if I honestly, truly felt like I wanted to work things out, I would have wanted to work things out with him, whether it had been. Days from now, weeks from then, months from then, years from then, I honestly would have never, ever filed. I would have just not legally separated. We just would have been separated. Not on paper. We just would have been physically separated until we figured it out. But I already knew, like, when I left that apartment on Mother's Day, I already knew, like, this this shit's over. Like... I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to stay in no marriage for the sake of just saying I'm married and for the sake of saying, trying to brag about having a ring. Like none of that means anything. If I'm fucking miserable at home, I'm miserable in this relationship and I'm constantly wondering what it would be like to be with somebody else. Like that's not cool. So I wasn't going to waste my time or his time. And I got the, you know, I got the divorce. And since then, I mean, we have rough patches. You know, I I think he still feels like I kind of, I ain't going to 
say I forced the divorce, but I really didn't give him no... I really didn't give him an option to try to work things out. I mean, like I said, I did ask him before I filed. But... I did it as a courtesy. I just did it because I felt like that was something I had to do. I, I had to give him that, that opportunity to express whether or not he wanted to try to work things out. But it, I already knew, like, I'm, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to file anyway. And if I don't file today, the second he pissed me off again, I'm just go down and file. So I, I, didn't want it, I didn't want it to be like that. And I feel like as just <laughs> being divorced and all of that transpiring... I think for him, it just, it rubbed him the wrong way. And he just, I don't know, I feel like he just has such a a dislike for me at this point. I mean, clearly we, we, we're co-parenting, um, but it's been very rough. And I think a lot of it has to do with how he believes, you know, I went about things. He may feel like, you know, you never gave a fuck about me. You were so quick to get the divorce, blah, 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 blah. He just sees red, I think, when he thinks about it. So, that sucks. And I hate that I we both wasted each other's time like that. But shit happens. And I know, I'm, glad, I'm just glad we didn't waste any more time. I know a lot of people look down on divorce, or especially if you're young and you get a divorce, they be like... They really be trying to come for you like, well, that's why you're not supposed to get married in your 20s or get married at this age or that age. You should have waited till this or blah, blah, blah. Or they felt like you weren't taking your vows seriously. And I definitely did. Whether or not I truly wanted to be married or not, I definitely withheld my vows. I took those serious because that was a serious thing. I didn't play around with that. But I also, I also wasn't going to be like, my elders, who I saw just stay in marriages for 50, 60, 70 years, and they low-key were miserable. They low-key didn't want to be there, like, high-key, too. <laughs> they didn't want to be there. They wished they would have, you know, gotten a divorce and moved on and saw what was, the, you know, what else was out there. But unfortunately, the way they were raised, you know, they were raised to, you know, A, once you get married, you married until death do you part. Like, that's law. And, you know, that, that sucks for their, for them, you know, for their generation. But that's not the model I was living by. The, when I, when I realized, like, I just wasn't satisfied, I wasn't fulfilled in this marriage, and I just felt like no amount of anything is going to work, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. I, I don't care. And then it was better for me to leave sooner than later before we had any assets or any, you know, any real kind of shared properties or anything or you know incomes or anything like that so I'm happy about that but getting a divorce doesn't make me not want to get married again I definitely want to get remarried in the future and I just look at my marriage or whatever you want to call it I look at it as a lesson I, I look at it like okay next time around I know signs to look for. I know what to do. I know how to react in certain situations. I know what I need to be doing on my end, you know, as a partner, as a, as a spouse, and what I should expect of the other person, you know, my partner, my spouse. So it definitely didn't make me not want to be loved or not want to ever get married again because the first one failed. There were a lot of factors that played into why it didn't work. But I would definitely say that, that would have been, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna say that would have, that's gonna be my first and last divorce. Because if I get married again and the motherfucker's not doing right, I mean, I'm gonna divorce him again. I don't, I don't care. Like, I'm gonna just do that. I, I really don't care. But I want to say that's really all I had to say concerning marriage and divorce and my experience with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't have nothing else to say other than. You know, I wish that I wish my ex-husband the very, very best and I want him to be happy. And it sucks that we didn't work. But. I mean, that's life.